Three, two, one, go. Hey, what's up guys? So welcome to another uh, short form tutorial. And today I want to talk about Boolean operations or Boolean operations. And basically what that is, is using a shape to extract this shape from another shape. So let's say you wanted this shape, which I just made from cylinders and, and the radial function. So I made this shape, but I want to cut this shape out of this. I want a hole passing right through. So we can do that with Nomad and it's pretty easy once you know how. Uh, so I'll just do that really quick. So let's say I want to, I want it to pass all the way through. I'll stretch this out and I'll place this shape into the box like this. Um, and you want to be on orthographic because that way it's a little bit easier. I can tap front and I can make sure that it's lined up the way I want it to be. So once it's lined up where you want it to be, all you have to do is take, okay, so this is my shape and we want the box hard surface. So these are the two that we're gonna work with. You wanna make sure that you select them both and whatever shape you want to uh, be erased, you just hide that shape. So now you can sort of see it, but it's sort of like a, it's a ghosted image. So that's the one that's going to erase. So again, we have box hard surface and then we have the radial shape. And you just want to make sure that you uh, take away the shape that you want to be extracted. So now that we have those two, we want a voxel remesh. And usually when I do this, I do it fairly high. I'll just do it at like 300 for now. So you just voxel merge them together. And what it does is it cuts out that shape from your from your square uh, but sometimes when I make I'll make some interesting shapes or game consoles and I want like a thin line uh, and I wind up using this for a lot of sculpts so this is what I would do in that situation I'll just bring this back for now so you can see it because usually when I do them I do them all together so I'll put this shape here because I know I want that shape extracted from the middle but also, I'll add another box, and I'll just rename this one Thin Line. So I'll bring this box up, and I want to use this to make a thin line. So I'm just going to shrink it until it's really thin. And you can either go here, and I'll probably do the post subdivision up to two, and then linear subdivision. So you can validate it like that, uh, or you can just validate it and then you can voxel merge it a little bit higher, like 200 or 300, either or. But you just do that so it's nice and solid and has nice sharp edges. So that's the only reason I did that. So now we'll bring this down to where we, where we want it to cut. I'll make it bigger. So let's say we want it pretty much right in the middle of our shape. And actually, I'm noticing that our shape is not, let's say we want it uh, maybe at the top. Maybe we'll do one here and we're gonna shrink it so it's really, really thin. So something like that, we just want a thin line like that. And I'm actually gonna clone it so that we have two. And I'll bring one down towards the bottom as well. So something like that. And I want to take this shape and I want to sort of spin it. Let's get off snap. Uh, let's see what is a nice... There we go. I just want to make it sort of... Uh, maybe I'll just do one on the top and two on the bottom. Okay, now I'm starting to... Starting getting to get into my longer tutorials like I always do. So let's just adjust these thin lines. I do a lot of adjusting before I go into my uh, carving. So now we have these two flat planes and we want to create lines from these two. So since they're sort of together, uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave them. I'll leave them separate for now. 
it might be easier. So I just want to make lines on the outside. I don't want to cut all the way through this box. So what I do is I take our box and I extract that from these planes. So after I extract, extract the shape of this box from the planes, then I make the planes smaller. So it cuts into the actual box. So basically what I just said is, so this box, I'm going to create a clone of it. We can hide the original one. So now we have a clone of this box. So we want to do the Boolean operation with the box and the thin, both of these, the thin lines. But I'm going to erase the box instead. So now it's going to cut the box shape out of these uh, flat panels. So let's voxel merge that together. And I'll do it at like 300 again. So we'll box merge that. So now we have our shape and we also have uh, these two cutouts. So that's exactly what we need. So we'll bring back the one that we hid. So now we have this shape here. Okay, so this is looking good. And I'm going to go ahead and join um, the thin lines. Did they already join together? Okay, yeah, they already joined together. So we're good on that. So both thin lines are now one shape. And we can use this to cut into our box. And the way we'll do that is we'll make sure that we're on the thin lines and we'll just shrink it. So we'll shrink it this way and we'll shrink it this way. It doesn't have to be that much, but just so they're cutting into the box. So now we take the hard surface box so that's our main box. That's what we want to make the shapes with. We have the thin line and then we have our radial shape. So now I'm going to subtract the thin line and the radial shape because that will cut those into the box. We'll voxel remesh. I'll go a little higher, 350. Voxel merge it. And then we have our cut out here. So we have our shape and then we have our, our lines going through. And I maybe it would have been better if I went a little bit higher with that. Um, and I probably could have made this a little thinner, but you can dial it in. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, the idea, the idea behind it. And let's see if I, oh, I didn't. So one thing that I meant to do is duplicate the radial shape. So let's clone that. We'll hide, let's hide this one. So we'll take the thin line. So we'll do the same thing, but now we just made an extra radial shape. And I'll voxel remesh at 400. Oh, voxel merge, voxel remesh. So now we have our shapes here. I'm gonna take rounded edge. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So now that I have rounded edge, I'm just going to round this out a bit. It's 320K, but now that I've used the rounded edge a few times, I can probably decimate that to get the size down. It's important to use rounded edge and bring the size down. Uh, that way you can just do more with your scenes. It's starting to get a little wonky. So I'll just go back here since I'm not really that not really that worried about the size right now. So we have that. We have the other radial. So if you want to do something like oh, wrong one. You can take that shape and maybe like put it inside or something like that. You can make it smaller. You can do really, really cool things like you can clone it and you can make that smaller and pull it out. And let's say the middle one, maybe you want to, maybe you want to make these subsurface.
Lots of fun stuff you can do with these. Or maybe you want to clone the middle one and maybe make it glow by turning it into an additive. Always unlit, something like that. And let's change the color of it. So let's change it to change it to a, a nice purple color. That's really interesting. I don't know why it's making that shape, but I love it. Yeah, so that's what that's how you do a Boolean operation. Um, pretty useful, pretty fun to do. And it just really just gives you the ability to do some cool shapes. And uh, even this, you know, it really gives you the ability to make some interesting shapes. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that's interesting. Uh, let me know what you make with your Boolean operations. The possibilities are endless. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to learn more, check out my classes on Skillshare. I have 2D classes and 3D classes. If you want to see more, be sure to check me out on social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all Drug Free Dave, and also Facebook. There's some really great Facebook resources for Nomad Sculpt and Procreate, including my own group, Procreate Tutorials and Guidance. As always, keep drawing, keep sculpting, and I'll see you all in the next video. What's up guys, welcome to another 3D Sculpt and Chill. This is Halloween Cat, the time lapse, the speed paint. Uh, this has been really fun. This is actually from a 2D course. You can see on the, on the bottom left, uh, this is a 2D course that I made on Skillshare and then I decided to take that character and make it a 3D course. Uh, I'm gonna continue and make the pumpkins and the background and everything like that in 3D. I just have so much fun with 3D and I like that I'm going to start in 2D and procreate and then bring it to 3D. This cat was really, really fun. I mean, I made, I made the chunky one, but I wanted to make a little normal, more normal size, cute cat. So this was the perfect excuse to do that. Actually, right after I did this, the update came out. So I've been, I just finished doing a, a live stream where I went over subsurface scatter and I was trying to figure everything out and get used to the new uh, version 1.6 Nomad Sculpt. And so far, so good. Um, I'm actually gonna post this next. I'm gonna try to post it next. Next, uh, It's gonna be the real time of me painting the cat. I do a few different paint jobs. Uh, I'm not speaking in it, but at least you can follow along and see exactly what I'm doing. 